So Ryan Hedge is a bit of a weird one. Um, one afternoon I was helping a friend. Uh, we were coming back from feeding the horses and chickens and putting the dogs to bed. And um, she comes around the back of the house and we've got this um, gigantic potato vine that's turned itself into a hedge uh, that covers the back porch. And she's just about to pass through and I'm like, wait, stop there, don't move. And she's like, oh, I've got a spider on me or something. I'm like, no. I just need to take a photo. And so um, I got out my phone and I snapped this shot and um, immediately um, something just grabbed me about it. And I don't know what it was at the time, but I spent the whole afternoon just walking around musing at this photo. Angie's wearing um, this super long, three sizes too big uh, raincoat that I bought her. And um, she's wearing my gum boots that are like two sizes too big for her. And um, you know, of course, there's the hedge that's uh, so big and dark that it covers um, her entire head. But finally, um, after cropping it and playing with the color and um, that sort of thing, uh, I ended up with this big square. And I was like, okay, all right, now it's a little bit too suggestive now. <laughs> I'm going to have to do something with it. Um, so I ended up taking um, the uh, picture to the studio, and uh, I had it set up near the piano when I was looking at it and stuff. And, you know, what do I do at this stage? Uh, I know I have to tell this thing's story, whatever it is. Um, so then I ended up uh, just sitting at the organ here, and, you know, I was um, just picked out two chords, very basic, back and forth. That turned into an entire performance that I ended up capturing pretty much in one go. Something was still missing and I was like, okay, this would be a really good opportunity for me to lay on some guitar. And so um, I got out my guitar and I, I enjoyed soloing over the whole thing, but then I'm like, okay, well this is now going to turn into a guitar album, which I don't want it to turn into. Um, it's just an excuse to play guitar over, and I'm like, okay, that's not going to work. Um, so I canned that idea, and then I was like, okay, what else can I do? Um, and then I started flipping through um, Logic's presets. There were a few samples in there that were really great, um, like the, the tubular bells, and I think that's one of the first ones that I started to put just in particular places. I had the Mtron pl plug-in from about a, 10 years back and that didn't work anymore. Um, I was, wasn't able to update that. And so I used these samples out of Logic and they were actually really good. They didn't sound um, too bad at all. And so I, I decided to keep those. I said, okay, well the Mellotron sounds good. Now what else can we do to articulate and to highlight some of these parts? I knew that for the sound, I wanted this to have a very ancient kind of um, forgotten B-movie type sound. So I bounced everything to tape and I liked the first, first mix and I was like, this is cool, but can we make it a little bit more, the sound a little bit more degraded? So I ended up doing it a total of eight times. The, the last run through, which was the ninth run through, uh, things started to break up a little bit too much and you know it got to the point where I think the tape had started to wear out <laughs> and then I was like okay you know I like I like the eighth take so I'm just gonna keep that one um, and so that's that's what we sort of kept for it and uh, listening back again on the fourth day of recording and bouncing back um, I was liking what was happening and then I was like no there's still something a little bit something they're missing and then I, I went I reverted back to um, my paragraph and you know maybe I can still narrate this thing maybe I can still do something with it and um, again that didn't work so after about another day then I sort of was like okay well what can we do that's gonna give this some kind of an anchor point for the listener um, other than the titles I then had this idea where maybe everything that's being said um, before the tracks open 
maybe it's like kind of uh, Iris's collective subconscious bleeding through. Um, maybe it's like an electro voice phenomenon type thing or, or whatever. And uh, that ended up just being enough of a suggestive thing there to keep the listener um, invested in it, or at least me invested in it. So that's uh, Rain Hedge. Um, I'm going to make this available uh, soon on Bandcamp, some other platforms, uh, whenever I can. But um, I hope you've enjoyed, and um, take care. Stay dry. Thanks. <laughs>